Hi, welcome back to another video in our series on cloud native application development. My name is Nathan Love and I'm a senior app dev with Red Hat Consulting. In this video, we are going to discuss behavior driven development and what that looks like in your project. Now you might be asking, what is behavior driven development or BDD? Now with BDD, this asks the question, is this what we should be testing? BDD is a branch of test driven development or TDD, and it uses human readable descriptions of software user requirements uh, as the basis for the software tests. Now with BDD, your focus is on an outside in perspective, meaning we test behaviors which are related to business outcomes. Uh, with BDD, the way it usually works is the developer defines a test or a scenario, uh, and then you would run that scenario, which you would expect to fail, until you implement the, uh, the backing steps that will actually uh, make those tests work. Um, so now there's a couple of different options here, I mean, a couple of different uh, methodologies that you may have heard of or you might be familiar with. We discussed TDD as well as BDD. A third is called acceptance test-driven development. Now with TDD, that's the, the standard approach, the test-driven development. This is more of a developer-focused method uh, that aims to encourage well-written units of code that meet requirements, while ATDD is a methodology designed to promote collaboration among customers, development, and QA to ensure well-designed requirements. Now BDD extends the process of TDD except it's focused more on uh, business process as opposed to just testing the, the code directly. Um, now, I, I will say there is no rule that says you can only choose one of these methodologies for testing your code. In, in fact, um, it's probably a good idea to have a mixture of these different type of tests because no individual test methodology is going to fully cover all use cases of your code. And so, by mixing these, you will ensure that whatever you're testing um, is going to be fully tested at the end of the day. So uh, you might be asking, why should I use BDD? With BDD, um, you have a spec file and a scenario to create readable tests, tests that anybody can understand from the business analyst to the business customer to the programmer. And not only can anyone understand them and read them, but they can also extend them and make changes uh, in order to you know, change the flow or change variables that go into the function calls, anything uh, to make the test what they need it to be. Um, so with acceptance criteria that you normally have in a story, they can be defined in such a way that tests can actually be generated, developed, or directly from that, and developers can then implement the code to back the tests. And uh, the business will be able to understand the test, they can read the test directly, so you can reduce any uncertainty and build confidence in what you're actually developing. So uh, the syntax that we use for writing BDT tests is called Gherkin. Uh, Gherkin is a business readable domain specific language created specifically for behavior descriptions. This syntax promotes behavior driven development because it allows developers, managers, business analysts, and any other parties involved to understand the requirements of the project and its life cycle. The language makes it easy to create a simple documentation of the code that's being written. Gherkin also has uh, several scripts for test automation and supports dozens of languages. So the layout for uh, a normal Gherkin scenario is a given when then, which you might be familiar with. Um, each test will have a given section, which is the current state of the application or, or whatever your API is. Uh, any setup steps that are required, that's where they will go. The next section is the when area. And the final section is the then. So the when will be uh, the behavior that you're wanting to test. And then the then is going to be the outcome of that behavior. So let's look at some code. Now we'll be starting off with the to-do application that we've been working on in the previous labs. The most recent one that we're pulling from is the lab that looked at adding mustache templates uh, to our application so that we could add annotations for an in-memory uh, database. So if you haven't checked out that video, you should definitely go look at the lab or the video. Um, it's not required, but it's a really great video, so you should check it out. So that's where we're going to be starting. So uh, currently our application has an in-memory database and all of the endpoints have been fully implemented. 
So our application works as expected, um, but we don't have any tests. So I've gone ahead and added a couple of scenarios for our to-do application, and I wanna walk through them really quick. Um, the first one is a to-do that's created with using uh, Spring. So we have uh, annotations here and auto-wired our to-do service um, so we can test it directly. So in this uh, scenario, we're testing that a to-do can be created. Uh, pretty simple test, but something that we need to make sure that happens. So in our, our given area, we have a to-do object uh, with the following data. So we have a table here to define a to-do object. When we create a to-do, uh, so we're going to actually create a to-do using our API, then I should get a response of 201. So we can see over here in our step definitions class that we have uh, steps that correspond to each of those scenario steps. So we have a to-do object with the following data where we're grabbing the to-do data table and uh, actually generating an actual to-do object. We call our to-do service to create a to-do and then we check the response of that call. So the next one is using mock MVC to actually mock out the uh, service so we can call it using um, the HTTP request types. So this is uh, extremely helpful if you want to actually call an outside service or something to that effect. Uh, so it's the same test where I have a to-do object we create using MVC and we get a response of 201 so we can look at those steps. It's very similar. Uh, the big difference is we're going to perform here with mock MVC a post call and we're going to pass it in that way. And we're going to check our status using the uh, mock MVC status. So uh, to run these tests, it's very simple. Um, you can actually just use Maven and we'll do a Maven test. Um, we are still in our uh, in our project here. We have uh, open API generator set up. So we're still generating our uh, classes using that every time. So we make sure that we are cohering to our contract. Uh, and now you can see uh, split second there, you saw that spring was running. So our, our application is actually running. We're testing directly against it. And you can see our two scenarios, they passed. We have six steps. They also all passed and uh, everything is working as expected. So now I want to walk through adding a new test and I'm actually just going to copy this in so you don't have to watch me type. Uh, so here we go. We have a scenario for deleting a to-do object using its ID. So we have uh, given a to-do object exists with an ID of one when I delete the to-do object with an ID of one and I get a to-do object with an ID of one then I should get a response of 404. So this is simulating a delete and then a follow on call to actually try to get the to do with that ID. And we would expect a 404 because that ID has been deleted. So once again, we can go ahead and run this. So this scenario, this could be something that was given to you uh, by a business analyst or a tester. And this is all they would have to hand to you. And then you would be able to, as a developer, come in and implement these tests. Um, so we can see, oh, we got some yellow. That's not good. Uh, we have an undefined scenario with three undefined steps. Now you can see that the last step was skipped, but it is implemented. So it can actually, we can actually pull in from our previously declared steps as long as it has the same wording. Um, one nice thing is it's going to give us some snippets uh, to implement these tests if we want. Uh, I'm actually going to once again copy these in so you don't have to watch me type. So uh, these are going to be pretty straightforward. Um, got to put them in the right one though. Uh, so we have a few tests here. We got to make sure we have everything imported properly. And uh, we can take a look at these. Uh, first of all, we have a to do object exists. Uh, so this is going to call the to do service and try to get this to do with that ID. And then we're going to make sure it's not null. We're going to delete with an ID. Same thing, we call the to-do service, we delete, we get the response. Um, if the response is a 400 or above, the uh, to-do service is actually going to raise a response status exception. So for the test, we're actually just gonna catch that. And in that case, we would still set the response 
uh, with whatever the response value was. Um, you can also write tests to check for exceptions. Um, that can be a separate thing. But in this instance, we're just checking the response status. Uh, and then the final one is when I get a to-do object with an ID of uh, an integer, and then we're going to do the same thing. So now that we have added these steps, we're going to uh, run the test one more time. Those are going to go. And there we go. So now you can see we have three scenarios, uh, 10 steps. Everything is passing. Everything is successfully uh, tested there. And, and so that is basically the process of uh, running through your BDD tests. And obviously, you'd have many more scenarios uh, for your specific use cases. But this is what it would look like. And this is how you implement the steps. So as you can see, um, if you're not a programmer, if you're not familiar with you know the code base, uh, with these scenarios, they're in a very human-readable format. So anybody could come in here and see, oh, OK, well, I'm testing that. Uh, I'm creating the object and you know these can be as granular as you want so if you want to you know really um, fully define the behaviors in your code then that's something that you can do and you know the sky's the limit with how this goes so thank you very much uh, that's an intro to BDD and I hope you've enjoyed it